What's up, YouTube? This is Zacomo once again here with another show. Today, I have a great guest. I'm here with Shamora Alakum, and she is an adventurous, fun, free spirit person who is an accomplished mural artist and painter. She has traveled the world and lived in Senegal and Spain. And today, we will, we will be talking about her business, Arts and Echo, and which is a wearable art that reflects and respects Mother Earth and humanity. So this for me is a, uh, a, a personal uh, a project or a personal thing for me because uh, Shamora is a childhood friend. And I'm always interested in hearing how people I grew up with, how they have decided to take their career or take their lives in their hand and manifest their dreams. And uh, I just wanted to sit down and, and speak with her so that she could share her journey in being an entrepreneur and, and share with us some of the things that she's learned al along the way. So I would like to welcome Shamor to the show. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It's good to see and hear from you. Yeah, you All too. Right. So just to start off things, I would like to hear from you. What inspired you as a kid? What inspired me? Yeah, um, as a kid. I was, like, I was inspired by art and things that had a lot of color in them as a kid. I remember growing up and drawing with my dad and always wanting to, you know, compete with him or be better than him or develop that skill. So really it was um, a desire to just explore the different mediums and art, such as dance, such as painting, um, such as, you know, improv, theater and just kind of see where I fit, where I didn't fit, and, you know, explore life in that way. So, yeah. Okay. Is there a specific moment in time where you began to do art or where it became most noticeable to you? Is there a specific age or a person who introduced that to you? I heard you say your father, but um, mm -hmm. I'm, I guess, like, when did you start doing your own art? Um, I would say that I was really, um, I was really blessed to have great teachers throughout that really encouraged my artwork. And so when I got into high school, um, I ended up being in AP art. So I started, you know, when you're in AP art, you have to create like your own project or your own theme and work towards that. So that's when I really felt like I was able to grasp on like, what, what inspires me or, you know, what empowers me. And when I was in school, my theme was like um, mother nature, specifically flowers and nature. Um, and I think that kind of inspired the way I look at art now and today, because it's very like, you know, respecting mother earth and like getting inspired from mother earth is kind of how my art grows and develops, so. Is there a particular teacher that stands out to you? When you were in high school? Um, yes. I forget her name. <laughs> what was it? It was Miss Something. Miss Something. Okay. It was a miss. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot her name. Oh my gosh. But we had a very interesting um, relationship. Okay. So was it in high school that you made up in your mind that you were going to be an artist? No, it wasn't in high school. Um, it was actually after I graduated from college, a couple years after that. Okay. Um, so, right. I, like, you know, um, yeah, well, I went through the college year. Well, what I was going to say uh, is before, gonna... we, before we even get into college, um, I do want to kind of rewind it back okay. um, to, I, I read that you went to Howard University and you majored in psychology and painting. And I just wanted to know what, what made you want to major in those two things? I know about painting, but why psychology? Um, I just wanted to focus on something that was most important to me and I was most passionate about. And I realized, like, you know, growing up that I really enjoyed the art of helping people and uplifting them and also, you know, art itself. And so I decided to combine psychology and painting because while I was an undergrad, I was thinking that I wanted to become an art therapist which is still not off the table, but that's not necessarily where the direction of my life went. But 
I wanted to combine the two things I was most passionate about, which is connecting with people, uplifting them um, through the arts. Okay. And, and then while you were in school, did you have any, um, did you, did you have any experiences, like any projects that you worked on? Cause I see that you uh, are an accomplished mural artist. So did you work on that skill while you were in college or was that after college? No, that was actually after college. Um, but while I was in college, um, I really wanted to like, you know, the canvases are kind of fixed sizes, but I wanted to kind of explore different shapes and different sizes of canvases. Um, so college allowed me to kind of explore bigger pieces. So um, I actually have a piece right there on my wall um, that I painted and it's like, like this big. <laughs> And like this tall. That's really big. Um, I can't even see your hands. <laughs> exactly. Um, but that gave me like the courage to like, hmm, maybe I can go bigger than the canvas and maybe I can paint, you know, as a, in a mural. So. Okay. All right. So at this point, you know, uh, you're, you're in college. When did you go to Senegal? Um, I went the summer of my senior year. Okay. And, and what was that opportunity? Um, I was volunteering. It was a volunteer slash internship with a nonprofit organization called 10,000 girls. And that organization works with girls that are in the community that are kind of marginalized or need additional support in school, or they may not be able to attend school because of um, the way society kind of treats women in that time. I mean, in that time, in that area. And so it's really about um, uplifting them and creating resources for them to actually learn so they can have an education. Okay. Um, and while you were out there, were you about to say something? No, go ahead. While you were out I'll probably be able to say While you were out there, um, can you share that experience, you know, with us? Like... What what did you what what are some of the things that you learned out there just about the people the culture and maybe even art? Um, I learned a lot. <laughs> Let's see. It was a very it was it definitely took me outside my comfort zone, but I've realized in life that I grow the most when I'm like uncomfortable. Um, but it taught me a lot about you know, developing those relationships with people. Cause for example, when I got there, I was, I had the um, idea that they spoke English, but it turned out that they didn't speak Engl any English and they spoke French. Meanwhile, I took Spanish my whole, you know, career. So I'm like, um, no problem with France. <laughs> but I had to learn um, while I was there, but it was a beautiful thing because I was able to like learn this language while they were trying to learn English because we wanted to communicate. But beyond the words, we were able to communicate, you know, non-verbally. And I feel like that's kind of where a majority of communication happens anyway. Um, so I would just say like connecting through, connecting to them um, beyond words was really um, a beautiful thing. And then just kind of observing the way that, I like to say my brothers and sisters um, are on, you know, in Senegal because that was my first time going to the continent of Africa. And so I was really excited to, you know, feel like, you know, I was coming home um, in a way. And I didn't necessarily get that welcome feeling, but I still felt very warm while I was there. Not just because it was 120 degrees every day. Mm -hmm. The way that they are giving and they're very um, open to you. Um, and they, they give you as much as they can with as little as they, with, with as little as they have, you know. Um, and it taught me the importance of being outside my comfort zone. It taught me the importance of um, developing relationships with people that are opposite of, opposite you. It taught me the importance of you know being courageous. Um, I remember there was one there was one incident where um, I actually had to. Well, I guess how should I explain this? I had a not an altercation, but I had an incident with a gentleman that was overstepping his boundaries, and that was my first time where I actually stood up for myself because I knew that I had to not only um, for myself, but for any other African American woman that's in that situation. Like, 
um, I had to really tell him like that was, that made me feel very uncomfortable and you know it's inappropriate for you to treat me a different way than you would treat your own you know African brothers and sisters you know and so that was that was the point for me that was really empowering and then um, at the end of the project we had to propose our own project that we wanted to do with the girls individually and so mine was to um, paint two community mural projects um, with the girls at neighboring schools. And so that was really nerve wracking for me because at that point I had never painted a mural, but I really wanted to share with them the beauty of art. And it was just amazing how they embraced it and how they loved it. And they um, they were able to the, you know jump in on it and have, have a lot of fun doing it, so. What did you paint? Um, we painted two murals. Um, one was an image which you can see on my website. One was an image of like kids walking towards the entrance of the school, but there was like a sun at the top that was like shining down on them. Um, and it said, um, okay, I haven't spoken French in a while. It was like, sur le vu meilleur. It means on the path to a brighter future. Okay. Um, and then the other one I painted was just like images of school, um, school products and school supplies and a couple of students that were smiling. That's good. That's cool. It, it seems like going out there, it allowed you to learn a little bit more about yourself, you know, and like you said, you, you never had stood up for yourself before. And I, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure after that experience, you felt a little bit more empowered, a little bit more confident. You yeah, know, come back to this to to United States, and especially when you just think about it, traveling across the globe out there, were you out there with people that you knew, or were you kind of out there by yourself and had to meet people? No, I just met the group I was with. We were a group of seven. Uh huh. So I, I guess met that. I, I guess that's a that's an experience. Well, as well, you know, people talk about going to college and sometimes you might, you know, not know anybody in college, but going to a whole nother country where they speak a different language and you don't have that many recognizable faces. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I feel like out of that experience, you probably, you know, gain a, a new sen sense of confidence and you, you came back to, you know, America, you know, uh, growing, grown into a different person. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I felt like I was like this African goddess when I came back. I was like floating on air in my little like <laughs> burlap sandals thinking I was the cutest thing ever. Um, <laughs> but, you know, sharing my wisdom. My, when I when I came back, my mom actually called, started calling me Little Yoda because I had all this wisdom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. All right. Really but I was always, you know, believe in yourself and look deeper and let's help. Let me help you find the answer. Like I became like this little Yoda person when I first arrived back. <laughs> and that's actually when I decided to cool. go back to being so, um, vegetarian. Oh, okay. Okay. How was the, the, the food out there? Mm -hmm. It was good. So it's very rice and meat heavy. Uh -huh. And so when I went there, um, I didn't, I don't eat red meat at all. At the time I was eating, you know, chicken and turkey, but I didn't eat any red meat. Um, and so it was funny because the first meal that they offered me was goat. Wow. I was like, thanks. And you know, it's, you know, it's very rude to like say you don't eat it. So I ate a couple of chunks of goat, which was interesting. Um, but then after that day, I was like, oh, by the way, I don't eat, you know, red meat. <laughs> Um, and so they were very, they were very um, open and accepting of that. And so, yeah, the dishes are very like rice heavy, and then you have like fish, and you have a couple of vegetables. And so they have it on this big plate, like this big, and they spread the rice out, and then they put the meat in the middle and the vegetables. And then everybody sits around the bowl, and they use their right hand to eat the food. So what you do is you grab the rice, and then you roll it up in a ball, and then you put it in your mouth. And that's the technique, because I thought I could do it. I was like, I got this. My rice was all over the place. <laughs> Meanwhile, they had these perfect little balls. So wow, that's that's a very unique experience. So yeah. you just roll it into a ball and then you just toss it in. Yeah, and then you just put it out. Oh, okay. I I have to try that 
one of these days <laughs> make my own rice this and, and do it but um yeah. to you know to keep things going so you said this was like your sophomore senior your sophomore year right in college sophomore summer right senior summer senior year okay yeah so okay i guess you come back and then you prepare for graduation what were what was uh graduating like how did you feel like did you feel like once you got done with school you knew exactly where you were going what you were going to do what was that experience like i had no idea what i was going to do i i had um a couple of informational interviews with people that were in the field that i was looking into which was art therapy and at the time there was really no um no outlook on how the career was going um there weren't really a lot of opportunities and so i was just kind of like oh my gosh what should i do but i knew that because i had never i never um studied abroad in undergrad that i wanted to travel and a friend of mine told me that they knew somebody that was doing this amazing program in spain and i was like oh my gosh let me learn about it so and so i ended up getting the information and applying and that's when i you know i was like okay well i'm about to do a couple years in spain to kind of and what, who I was and figure out everything what type of opportunity was that um it was a teacher a language and culture assistant um in spain it's called auxiliares de conversacion in españa okay and and talk to us about that whole cultural experience being out there in, in spain and being a teacher and and did you notice any differences amongst their lifestyle and american uh culture oh yes very different so the school days are like from 9 a.m until 2 p.m and then everybody goes home at 2 p.m teachers everybody that's working they go home to have lunch with their families and lunch is considered the biggest meal of the day um but they really emphasize the importance of being together for lunch and spending that time together so people spend about an hour to two hours just at the table eating and talking and drinking okay and so that was a big thing because they really focus on like being with your family um so i mean like every like the grocery store shut down the bakery shut down which you know i had to learn the hard way you know my stomach was growling the first couple of days so i was like i'm trying to go get a sandwich somewhere and they're like no <laughs> wow like, like wow. i was in a small town called galicia so you know here in america we're always like oh to go because we're always in a rush to go somewhere they they were just now getting on the concept of like to go they were like what do you mean to go have your coffee here with your friend and i was oh, like well wow. i'm walking somewhere and they're like i don't understand I don't and i was understand. like i don't understand either <laughs> <laughs> but it was really nice and like the towns were small so you could walk everywhere but big enough to be fun for like a whole year so while you were there did you was there uh any chance for you or did you work on your art as well did you do anything artistic while you were there in terms of for your your class um no I mean, I did teach my own my um, own individual classes, and I really incorporated a lot of like art and drawing, um, to, just to try to cover all the different learning styles. But um, I was kind of taking a break from my art just to kind of travel the world. Mm -hmm. okay. But I was getting a lot of inspiration from the places that I traveled for my art. And and how long were you there in Spain? Two years. Two years. Okay, so. Okay, so now let's transition into how did you, how did art and eco came about? Arts and eco came about. Arts and eco. Um, so actually it was during the holiday season a, f a few years ago and I was starting to get a little tired of um, how a lot of holidays have become very like commercialized and um, consumerized and so I wanted to start making handmade gifts for my family and friends so um, that that holiday season I decided to make um, handmade earrings for my family and friends as you can say <laughs> um, and I mean they loved them and I started getting a lot of compliments on the earrings I was wearing people were asking if I could if they could buy a pair how much were they I should start selling them and so after uh, you know a few people not a few people but like a whole bunch of people were like oh my gosh where can I get those earrings I would love to um, I realized that maybe I should try to share this 
um, my arts and eco, you know, earring collection with the world. So that's when I started to develop it into a business. Is this in Spain or is this? This is back in America. This is back here. Okay. After I came back from Spain. Okay. Um, can you talk about your brand? One of the things that I that stood out to me is that I saw that arts and eco was inspired by strong, bold, and beautiful women. And can you explain like how so? How how did you know how how so? Okay. Um, so I'm a very colorful person, as you can see. And I like to wear things that are like, you know, big and bold because I feel like they really, you know, bring a lightness and a happiness to myself and my soul and to the people that I encounter as well. Um, and I noticed a lot, like a lot of the women that I look to or a lot of the images that I see, I'm really inspired by like, you know, things that are very unique, things that are big, things that are bright um, and things that are bold. And so I wanted to create a piece of wearable art that people could, you know, wear that was still lightweight, but also big and bold and had a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. And another unique, another unique feature that I found out is that they are eco-conscious. All the materials yeah. you use are eco-conscious. Yeah. So, so what made you decide to choose that? Um, I think it kind of dates back to when I was a little girl and I was inspired by nature and how I've grown up inspired by nature and the importance of like loving and caring for Mother Earth. I mean, Arts and Nico is inspired by beautiful women and, you know, Mother Earth is kind of the, the, per, the being that created this earth that we live on and we have to really respect her and love her. And so I really wanted to have a brand that was loyal to Earth and loving her. Okay. All right. So one of the things that I like to share with my audience is, well, first, are you, are you working arts and eco full time or do you have a, another job um, that you're working and you have to do uh, arts and eco after hours? Mm -hmm. So actually I quit my job that was draining my soul last year. <laughs> Um, and I decided to supplement my income while I was working on Arts and Eco with substitute teaching. And then that actually ended up becoming like a full-time job because they wanted me to stay on, um, to the end of the school year, which was not my original plan. Um, but then, you know, got a little kids or whatever. So I decided to, to continue that and, but while I'm doing Arts and Eco. So I'll be teaching until the end of, um, June. But what's beautiful about that for me is that I know that like I can see the end of that coming. So it's like this is going to be supporting me um, financially for a while, but I see the end and I know that, you know, it's not going to be forever. But Artanico will be. So. Can you hear me? Mm, I can hear you now. OK. OK. Well. Um, so what? I know you said that it, it was uh, your last job, your previous job, it was kind of, you know, uh, messing with your soul, but is there anything, um, is there anything else that kind of motivated you that you could kind of see with your business, like you were getting some progress? Because what I want to share with people is, uh, you know, some people, they, they decide to take that leap and, you know, mm -hmm. take the risk. And, and go out there and pursue their dreams. But I would like to know if there were any indicators for you that kind of showed you that, okay, well, this is the right time for me, or maybe it was just like, it's either now or never, I need to do it. Like, can you kind of explain that process? Um, I was just at a point where like, I looked around me and I realized that everything that I said I would never do, I was doing. I was sitting in a cubicle, I was staring at a computer, you know? I was spending eight, I was walking with like hundreds of people every day on the train looking miserable. And I was like, this is not really the life that I want to live, not the life that I um, created for myself. Like, I'm not a great person. I'm a bright, you know, burnt orange person or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I decided like, 
I have all this creative energy, you know, but I'm thinking I'm only using half my brain when I can be using the other half that's more creative and then bring the um, other half into it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> um, I was just like, you know, I got to be free. I got to be me. I think I do my thing. and I can't be afraid because um, fear holds you back and then you never you end up not accomplishing the things you want to accomplish. And so it was definitely scary when I quit, but beautiful things came out of it yeah what what has been um what has been like some of the challenges that you face just um you know running your business art to ego i think the biggest challenge is just believing in yourself you know even when you don't get a sale for a week or so just knowing that that's okay and that's the process and um just like that i love that story um the rabbit and the hare because at the end, was it the rabbit and the hare? Or was it the turtle? The, 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 the hare and the tortoise. There we go. <laughs> the tortoise. Okay. Who won? Okay, the tortoise. And so you don't need to rush. You can, you can take your time. And that's the thing that I also had to learn. I was like, well, I need to be making 100 sales a day. Um, first of all, I can't do that because I can't make 100 earrings a day because they're all handmade and hand painted by yours truly um but secondly like you could get burned out very easily because um you're not taking your time to learn about the process talking to people understanding um you know the challenges that you might face uh, and so yeah that's that's kind of it <laughs> all right i agree with you um what i've noticed recently is that when like you have two sides of the table you got one side where you might be looking at other people who might be successful and what you notice in them is the amount of time that they've actually put into it like when you see when you see someone's success that it's like compounded time you know they spent all of this time and you're actually looking at the end result and then at the other side you know amongst i guess your community and your friends and people that you see on a daily basis you know, you kind of get sucked into this energy of, I guess, complacency or what's practical and what's, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. So, you know, it, it takes a, a, a really strong type of person to be able to, to be able to believe in themselves, like you said, and, and put that discipline so that they can create what it is they know they want to do, you know, create those things that, you know, gives them joy, that gives them life you know, that makes them feel burnt orange. So, you know, I, I commend you and, and um, you know, doing what you're doing and, and, and betting on yourself, you know, because I know a lot of people, they don't. Like, everybody has great ideas, but, you know, a lot of people, those ideas just stay in their head. Yeah. So do you have, do you have anybody that you, I guess, look towards? Maybe it's a celebrity, maybe it's a, you know, a guru, maybe it's a parent that you look for a source of inspiration from? Um, I would say I really love NDRE because through it all and through the industry that she was in, she stayed true to herself. And that's kind of like a, um, it's kind of a lesson that we can all learn from. You know, because we're always in different circles or whatever, but it takes a strong person to be true to themselves and true to their own art and true to their own medium. So that was there. Speaking of, of music, I read that you have your own band. Is that correct? Yeah, if you heard that music in the background, that's my boyfriend practicing on the piano because we have rehearsal after this. Oh, okay. Okay, what's the name of your band? Oh. Shamora. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Shamora A. <laughs> so you're just, just involved in. What'd you say? It's just starting up. So. Okay. As soon so as I quit my job last year, all this creative energy just like rushed into me. And I was like, oh, cool. I can write songs. Oh, cool. I can sing. <laughs> so. Wow. So you, you. I mean, just on all spectrums, you're just like artsy, where it just comes to, to 
you know, the imaginary side, painting, music, you know, fun, bubbly, it's just all around. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> all right. And um <clears throat> before before we close out, I, I always like to 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 ask my guests, do they have any like resources? Like you have a good book that you might have read. Um, recently that you would like to share or maybe a website or um, maybe a YouTube video or, or something that you've seen that that uh, mm -hmm. you you saw a lot of value or you felt it as beneficial to you that you'd like to share okay well I love books that are like um, inspiring that are encouraging and kind of provide a different or alternative outlook to life so definitely The Secret is one of my favorite books. And it's also a docu-series or documentary. Um, I'm a big, like, documentary person. So I love to, like, Netflix and chill watching documentary. OK. You, so, what's, a, what's a good documentary? So, um, so I watched one recently. What was it called? It was, like. It was about removing the clutter. I think it was like simple life or something. It was about removing the clutter in your life and really. Was it like um, minim minimalist or something like that? Yeah, yeah, minimalist. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was really good. Yeah. So like things like that that are like different, unique, but like opposite of what the society actually tells you, which is like to be a consumer and a buy, 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 and then uh -huh. stop like release, release, release. Um, and it actually made a lot of sense, right? Like mm -hmm. those people that were living in those small houses, it's like these big homes that we live in, we don't even use most majority of the space in there. Exactly. And I, I was just wondering, I was like, where can I get one of those houses? I know. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them before, but I don't know. I can't give you a resource where you can get them. But like people barely use their dining room or like that additional decor like room that's like all fancy that nobody ever sits in. Like, why do you need that? Exactly. Um, exactly. And I was just reading a book when I was in Atlanta a couple weeks ago called Happiness. And that's a really good book. Who was it by? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're not like, right. a detail or like a detail person when it comes to things like that. I'm detailed like in my art, but not like when it comes to facts. Okay. Okay. So All right. I can look it up. I can look it up and, and post that information. But um, what I want to do now is I, I want to show everyone your art and your website. So give me one second while I share my screen. All right. Can you see? Can you see what I have up? Yes. OK, so this right here is Shamor's website. It is called artsandecho.com. So you can go here and you can learn a little bit more about her business and herself here. And you can also come here to shop and check out our earrings. So if I click shop, it takes me to her Etsy shopping cart or her Etsy profile. Where if you scroll down, any pieces of her art. You can see several pieces of her art. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also, if you are interested in her uh, her paintings, you can come to this website, which is shamormerit.wordpress.com, and uh, this is this is one of the paintings. This is one of my favorite paintings that I've seen by her, and uh, you can Thanks. just check, you can check out some of her work here. Let me see if I can scroll down. Here's another good one. Here's another good one. And this is a mural. Mm -hmm. Where is this? This is in Atlanta, off of Metropolitan Parkway. Okay. Wow. Is that recent? 2015. 2015. Okay, so that's pretty recent. Wow. And that's that's all your work. Did you have any? You didn't have any help with that. 
it was a community-based mural project, so I invited the community to help me in painting in the colors. Okay, I like it. I like it. And and also before we get off, um, do you have anything else that's coming up that we should be looking out for? Um, I will be launching a blog soon. It's okay. about the art of love, self-love, relationship love, attracting love, and platonic love. So that'll be coming out soon. Okay. You have any dates? Not yet. Um, it will be going out on in February, so you can so like near the end of February, so you can definitely go to my website and click blog. Okay. All right. Excellent. And then also, Shamor, um, what's the best way people can contact you? Definitely, if you go to my website, artsandeco.com, um, you can click on the contact, and I will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. All right. My well, email is also Shamora, S-H-A-M-O-R-A, at artsandeco.com. All right. And just so for everyone. Like to contact me. And also, just for everyone who's listening, who um, didn't catch all of that, I'm going to also be putting that in the uh, notes in the below so that you all can just click and go directly to our link or email her if you have any questions. Um, so, Shamor, I really appreciate you being a guest on the show. You know, at, at any time I'm, I'm around you, you definitely have that fun, bubbly personality. And it definitely just rubs off, you know, when I'm, you know, when, I, when you're talking to me. And um, I definitely feel like people listening to this uh, can definitely have a, a better appreciation for the journey. Because I, I believe the journey is, is most important than the actual destination. The, the, the journey is where we become who we, you know, who we are to become. And um, I, I definitely feel like you are, are, are learning a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and you are definitely taking some some um some some chances on yourself which is definitely beneficial for people who are interested in doing the same thing it's definitely encouraging to to see people stepping out and and following their dreams so i really appreciate you for being you and hey. uh, and and thank you for um you know talking to me so um and once again you too thank you for watching i know I don't know how long this video has been going on, but if you're still sticking around listening to this, I really appreciate you. If you like the content that I am putting out, or if you have any suggestions on different things that you would like for me to cover, make sure that you uh, leave a comment and also make sure you subscribe. Um, so uh, once again, thank you for listening and I will uh, hear from you next time. All right, bye. Thanks, Akoma.